I want to step back briefly and uh, kind of remind us of where we, where, why we're talking about uh, all of this stuff having to do with validity. And the big picture is we're trying to see if the, the measurements we're using, the techniques or methods for measuring the variables or constructs in our study, that they're, that they're good uh, ways of measuring those things. And so far, we've, we've talked about one way of assessing that, and that's to uh, uh, looking at the validity of our measurements, meaning are we measuring what we mean to be measuring, what we claim to be measuring. But another very important factor is what we call, is what we call reliability. So um, having to do with whether something, whether a measure is reliable or not. And when we use these terms, uh, very much like uh, validity and valid, these are, these are terms that we use in everyday language, but the sense in which we use them in science can be a little, a little narrower, a little more specific. So when we use the term reliable in everyday language, we mean something that is consistently good. It's something that you can uh, trust or rely on. So it's reliable. We mean it similarly in science, but specifically, uh, we don't mean so much uh, that, it's, that it's good or bad or that it's trustworthy so much as specifically that it, uh, if we say something is reliable, we mean it is producing consistent and that's the key word there, consistent results. So when you uh, see the term reliable used in, in science, especially in, in, return, in terms of a measure, when someone says it is a reliable measure, then that means that that particular technique produces consistent results. So let me give you an example. If we, let's go back to the idea of having an intelligence test. So if we give someone something like the IQ test, and we give them the test on one day. Let's say we give them the test on Monday and they score 100. If we come back and give them the test on Tuesday, uh, they shouldn't score. We, we would not expect them to score a very different score. We would expect to get something similar, maybe not exactly the same, but say 102. And then if we come back another day, again, something similar like let's say 98. This means that this is a this is a reliable this is a reliable uh, measurement for whatever it is it's measuring it it to be clear and i'll get into more detail on this later it doesn't necessarily mean that it's measuring what we want it to measure it doesn't necessarily mean it's measuring intelligence what re saying it's reliable means is that it's uh, it's it's reliably or consistently measuring whatever it is that it's measuring. It doesn't tell you what it's measuring, but it means that it is being consistent in measuring that thing. So to be clear, the, uh, saying something is reliable, saying a measurement is reliable, does not mean it is a, necessarily mean it is a valid measurement. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, a good or trustworthy measurement. It means it's trustworthy in the sense of kicking back the same results each time, but not necessarily in kicking back the results that you claim it's giving you or that you want. So that's why I say that we mean it in a very specific way. When we talk about a reliable measurement in science, we use that term in a, in a, in a narrower sense than we would in everyday language. And just to give you an example of the flip side, let's say we had a different test of intelligence and we can go ahead and use the idea of our new intelligence test that we talked about before. And let's say that uh, we give it to someone and, uh, and it gives a score of uh, five on one day and a score of 12 on another day and a score of uh, two on another day. These are not consistent results. So this would be a very bad thing to find because it would tell us that our measurement is not, our measurement technique here is not reliable. We're not getting the same results from time to time. Now in both cases, you've got some, some variation. Um, actually, let me, before I get into that, let me point something out that there is an assumption here underlying this, which is that we're assuming that the thing we're measuring is not really changing from day to day. We're assuming that your intelligence uh, stays more or less the same over time. Uh, obviously with some things that's going to be the case and with other things it's not. 
So we would expect your intelligence to be at least relatively stable over time. Uh, it's not to say that it couldn't change, and there's certainly interesting research on that. Uh, but that it, we wouldn't expect from Monday to Tuesday for your intelligence to jump by 40 points. On the other hand, if we were measuring something like your your mood from one day to the next, that obviously can change dramatically, and that's expected. So if we gave you some kind of test that was supposed to be measuring your mood uh, on, on two different days, and we got different results, we wouldn't call that unreliable. So you have to consider what you are expecting the underlying characteristic to do. If you expect that to change over time, then it doesn't mean, and, and you get different results over time, then that's acting as expected. So just to make sure that's clear. Uh, but what I was going to say before is that you can see with both of these tests that we have some variation. Even with our reliable test here, right? Even with this guy, it's not a lot of variation. So we're calling it reliable. So reliable doesn't mean that it has to give exactly the same results, but it means that it has to give mostly the same results. It has to be mostly consistent. And you are rarely going to get a measure uh, that gives exactly the same results from day to day. And the question is, why? So why is this not uh, identical? Why are the scores not exactly the same? Why are they just sort of mostly consistent but not exactly the same? Well, the answer is because of what we call we call error. So error is uh, is the difference between what is actually happening with the underlying variable and what you measure. So okay. We, if we get some changes from time to time, some of that could be due to the actual characteristic changing. Your intelligence might fluctuate a little bit. But we also expect, even if a characteristic stays exactly the same, that there's going to be some error in our measurement technique. Our measure is not going to perfectly represent the underlying construct or variable that we are measuring. So, but the question is, what is that? What is this error? I mean, it, it makes sense that when you measure something, uh, you don't get, you know, always a perfectly accurate result. But why is it the case that there is this error? And the answer to that is that it's not just sort of unknown, uh, magical error causing stuff that's floating around the world. These are factors or variables we might call them uh, that are that are things other other than what you intend to measure. In other words, what we're saying is that your measuring technique is never going to be influenced only by the thing you're measuring. There is, there is practically always something else, some other set of factors and variables that are happening out there in the world that are going to have an influence on that, uh, on that measure. So, for example, with an IQ test, we're trying to measure intelligence, but on one day versus another, a person might be more tired or be distracted because something happened at home and they're feeling stressed out or anxious about it. There's all kinds of factors other than intelligence that could come in and get measured by the IQ test. So those other factors, collectively, all of those factors make up the error on the test. Another way of putting this is to say that the, the measured measured score, in other words, the score that you actually get back when you give someone an IQ test, the measured score is equal to the true score, true score minus error. In other words, uh, the, by true score, we mean whatever they would get if error would, were not a factor. If there were no other variables influencing the measurement, then we would just get their true score. So to get to so to when we consider someone's total score from a uh, from any kind of measurement, we want to think about uh, how much of that do we think is actually composed of error. And so obviously, if error is small, then that means that 
you have good reliability. If you have a very large degree of error, then you're going to probably get very different results from time to time. So you're not going to get consistent results, which means we would not consider it a reliable measure. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that you're completely out of luck. If, if you're getting large changes from time to time, sometimes you can overcome that by taking multiple measurements and then averaging them. So they give an, an example in the book uh, about uh, concerning reaction time. Uh, they talk about how reaction time is uh, not something where we're able to get very reliable measurements of it. it. It changes substantially from time to time because it's very vulnerable to the influence of variables. Uh, the, the measurement, let me put it this way, the measurement of reaction time is very vulnerable to variables other than reaction time. So you ask someone to react to something, you measure how long it takes them to do that. If they're tired or they're stressed, uh, that could have a dramatic influence on how quickly they react. And they talk about how uh, that it's not at all unusual for uh, to get reaction times that on, on one day that are twice what they were on a different day. So what that means, though, is that if we want to get an overall idea of what someone's reaction time is and have that be something that is a reliable measurement, we would need to measure them on multiple days and take an average of those scores. Okay, so, so that's the basic idea with reliability. Uh, there are a number of, just like with validity, there are a number of different specific ways in which we can look at reliability. There are different, what we might call types of reliability, just like there were different types of validity. Uh, and so that's what we'll go over next as we'll get into some of those details.